This is my friend Earl. He stops in to see me now and then. Me and Earl's really good, but uh, Earl don't do that, man. Welcome back again, folks, to the house that never sleeps. Got this bass out here all shined up, man. It cleaned up like a brand new instrument. You're going to be surprised. I'm going to show it to you in a minute. But uh, what's been going on? Well, if you remember, when I held the camera down here at this thing, before we did anything to it, you could see an ungodly amount of relief in that neck. Do you remember that? Okay. And you remember I turned the truss a half a turn, about a half a turn, I tightened it. And uh, since then, I've turned it another quarter of a turn, and it's still not enough. It's still got an ungodly amount of relief. That's why it's taking so long, because I'm really having to put some bend in that neck, and it's an awful lot, you know, at one time. So I've adjusted it twice now and let it set for several hours, well, 24 hours each time. And as luck would have it, I'm going to have to take the neck off and adjust it again. I'm thinking maybe it might be easier to take these uh, screws out of the the uh, pick guard and just slide it back out of the way and adjust the thing right there. It may be easier to do that than to take the strings and the neck and crap off. I haven't decided yet, but I do got to adjust the truss rod again, yet again. So uh, we're going to do that today. And uh, this may turn into three parts. I don't know what we're going to get into here, but uh, let me get the camera in hand. I'll show you it really cleaned up nice once you see this. Okay, so remember what it looked like before. I didn't buff it either, by the way. I just uh, put a lot of elbow grease into it. The frets are, they look much better now. Fret board looks a lot better too. It was just horrendous. But check this out, man. That thing cleaned up like a, I mean, look at that. Yeah, it's got some wear marks there. That's what the pick guard's for. Looks like someone been using a flat pick on it. Well, I know a lot of bass players that do that, but. Anyways, it really cleaned up nice. I didn't buff it or anything. I just hand rubbed it all out. The back looks, you know, just as good as that. The thing's a pretty nice bass, actually. If I can get the neck pulled back enough without breaking it, but uh, you know, there's four screws in the back, back here. I can take the neck off again that way. But I'm thinking it might be easier to remove, what do we got, 12 screws in this pick guard. These got to come out too. And uh, I can loosen the strings and do that and just slide the pick guard back enough to get to the truss. I think that's what I'm going to do. So hold on, let's get into it. Let's do it. So I hope all is well out there in the land of YouTube. And things hopefully are settling down. Seems to be seems to be okay on this end so far. You know? Maybe they were just threats. Who knows when it comes to people like that. Accusing me of starting it. <laughs> you know, I think it was that person came to my channel. I didn't go to theirs. Anyways, enough of that. Enough with it. See what I mean? This is much easier and faster than taking the entire neck off of the back of it. Now, the neck is straight right now with the strings loose. Uh, they're, yeah, they're pretty loose. And the neck is straight right now. And when I tune it up to pitch, it gets this huge forward bow. Too much relief. Okay, so... I think if I can get a little bit of, well, maybe more than a little bit of back bow, then when I put under string tension, it should, you know, draw a, hopefully about the right amount of relief, relief into it. We'd like to see about 12,000. So I'm just going to tighten this. And I don't know if I said before or not, when I tightened this before, I just want to look down the neck here. Needs to go more. Uh, this neck popped and cracked, man. It made all kinds of noises when I tightened it before. So, you know, I don't know what we're going to get into with this. That, that's getting really tight. But, uh, you know, it's, it needs to go back more. I mean, what are you going to do? That was probably... 
about a quarter of a turn right there just now. Now I already tightened it once. I went a half a turn the first time. I don't know if I showed that on the other video or not. Let it set 24 hours. Went another quarter of a turn. It set another 24 hours. So here we are now again. Just went another quarter. And I'm going to go a little more with it. As bad as I hate to. It's like I say, that thing was popping, man. That wood, you know, that's it's a lot of movement at one time. There, we're getting some back bow in it now. I'm going to let that set for a few minutes, and uh, I'll bring you back. Just let it settle for a minute. You don't want to go, you know, too awfully much at one time. You can break the neck doing this, and it is starting to get pretty tight, so hold on. And I tightened that another three quarters of a turn. Good Lord, man. I'm not going to go any more with it. It's got some back bow in it right now, but... I don't want to go any tighter than that right now. The thing needs to set another 24 hours or so. Now I raised these up back here too. They were flat down as low as they would possibly go. So I raised them up because under string tension, you know, I'm going to have to adjust this to set the radius. And under string tension, I prefer loosening those as opposed to tightening them under string tension. So that's that. Uh, Right now, I'm just going to put all these screws back in the pick guard, and uh, I really don't think you want to just sit and watch me put screws in, but I don't know, maybe you do want to watch that. <laughs> So the first thing we want to do, I got it tuned up to pitch. The first thing we want to do before we can set the action, we got to get this radius right. So I'm just going to use this little tool right here. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see. Yeah, I think maybe you can see that okay. I need to lower this fourth string and hold on to the tools. And once we have the radius right to match the neck, and we just count how many times we turn the screws to keep that radius. Boy, that one's way up there. Once we have this radius correct, uh, you know, to lower the action and keep the radius, then we just count how many times we turn it each screw, turn them all the same. Right on the moolah. Let me tune it up again and uh, <clears throat> bring you back and we'll start checking neck relief and all that good stuff. Alright, we're tuned to pitch. Got a capo on the first fret. I think you can see that. Yes, you can. You see back here? 
almost see the saddles. Anyway, tune the pitch. Got a capo on the first fret. And uh, I'm going to do the 19th fret here. And we want to check 7, 8, and 9. You want to watch very carefully for that string to move up as I shove this under there, and it's not. I have a 15 here, and that's what the relief is, 15 thousandths. Let me do that on the 17th fret. You see what? Yeah, still, it's exactly 15. It goes in there. Uh, doesn't raise the string, but it's tight. I mean, it was well, not tight, but and that's 15 there. <clears throat> It's a perfect fit. Would really like to see this at twelve thousandths. But like I say, I don't know how long that neck has had that much relief in it. And we've turned that rod, that truss, a long ways, man. We've really been jacking on that sucker. So I'm gonna give the guitar I'll tell the guy if he wants to bring it back in a month or so, let it settle down for at least a month, because man, we God, I must have turned that truss rod a turn and a half total. You know, that's a lot. That is a bunch. I want, I want to check the string action now, but I've got to reposition the camera for that. So let's do it. Now, I want to hold this thing like where the strap would, would hold it. In playing position, 12th fret. And it is ungodly high. 864 so on the bass string at the 12th fret. Man. And 4, 5, 6, 7 64ths on the G string at the 12th fret. That's got to come way down. So let's just start by exactly what I told you before. We're going to come back here and turn each one screw. I'm going to loosen each one of these one complete turn and just see where that puts us at. Of course I'll have to retune the guitar again. I'm going to do a video very soon on uh, truss rod adjustment. The do's and don'ts. See a lot of funky things going on in truss rod land. So, look for that. Watch for that. It'll be real informative. Teach you, uh, you know, all the little things you may or may not encounter while adjusting your truss rod. Okay, there. I gotta tune it back up. So, I'll pause the camera for that and bring you back. Hold on. Well, this is pretty cool. I turned each screw one turn back here on the saddles. One complete turn on each screw and it brought it down exactly 1 64th. So that's kind of cool with the way that works out. I wonder if they measured those threads to make that work that way. So we're at 7 64ths on the base side here now. 4, 5, 6, 7 64ths. And 664s. I want to go a little bit lower than that. So we got to do it again. I'm just going to do the same thing I did before. And go one turn with every screw. I'll bring you back once we've done that. I don't know if you can see this tuner or not. <clears throat> it's on my phone. Well, all you can see, I think... It, there's a little indicator down on the very bottom of the tuner, and that's what I'm watching. I guess it would help to plug an amp in. Plug it into an amp. And when you see green, it's yellow, and when you see green, you know you're there. But that indicator down here shows too, so. I 
I'll go get a Peterson tuner to check that intonation. I, I don't trust that thing in a cell phone for setting intonation. It's okay, you know, to get tuned close, but uh, I'm going to use a real tuner for that intonation. like 664s and 564s might just leave that there for now yeah I'm going to and I'll show you why the bridge sa the saddles are uh, if you can see that let me get right yeah I think you can the first and fourth saddles are almost as low as they will go right now if you can see that on camera I think you can these two can go down a little bit more but we'd lose our arch if we do that we lose the radius these are almost as low as almost bottom now I could go a little bit more with them but I'm just going to tell him to bring this thing back in about a month and let it settle down for a while you know And uh, then we'll try to get some more, or some less relief in it. And uh, set the whole thing up again. Looking at those saddles, they look like they're lined up. I don't think that anyone's messed with those. But I'm going to go get a tuner. That sounds a bit sharp. Yeah, let me go get a tuner. I'm going to set the intonation on this puppy. Well, hopefully I'm set up here where you can see what's going on. I don't know, man. I'm in a really funky bind here, but trying to get it where you can see it. The G string is in tune. Harmonic at the 12th fret. It's good. Note. The 12th fret. And it's a tiny bit sharp. I'm hitting that string pretty hard too, but still, it's, it's a little bit sharp. See it rolling forward? There. The, oh, the harmonic. So it's a little bit sharp on the 12th fret. There you can see it rolling forward. That means we got to move this, we got to make the distance from the 12th fret to the saddle a little bit longer tuned at that same pitch and making it longer will lower that note. So hold on, I'll do that. I won't put you through the punishment of watching me turn this screw. Get him. House of Never Sleep, bro. Just woke up. Controls. Check that out. We got the, the treble. I'm just playing through a little rolling micro cube amp. It's not even for a bass. And you're not going to get good sound out of that amp. 
with a bass especially. I checked everything off camera again, by the way. Check the uh, neck relief and the action, everything, and it stayed the same. We still have our arch, our radius is still 12. Checked all that. All the frets work. I could get the action a little lower than that. But like I say, I would like to wait because these two are almost bottomed out, these two saddles. And we need to get lesser neck relief, less than 15,000. That's what it is right now like to get that down to at least 12 or down to 12 and then I can lower these uh, lower or may not even have to because that would bring the action down just by lesser neck relief practice my base obviously but there she is folks uh, set up really well we take one last look at it before she goes bye bye uh, really cleaned up I got fingerprints all over the thing right now but you can see it really polished up good put a lot of elbow grease into the old girl there's fingerprints again I'll, I'll wipe it all off good again though polish it one more time <laughs> so anyways, next video, uh, probably the next one, one very soon to come, is going to be on truss rods, how to adjust your truss rod, what to do and what not to do, and a safe way to do it, and uh, we're going to get in depth about adjusting your truss rod, and everything, you know, that comes along with it. <laughs> so thanks guys for staying with me through all this, and uh, Hope maybe someone picks something up that they could use a little bit, maybe on your own instruments. Save you a buck or two, whatever, you know. It's always good to save a buck or two. Thanks, guys and gals. Uh, keep it here. Tell everyone you know to come here and sign up. And let's uh, share the knowledge. Any knowledge you have, put it in the comments below. And uh, like, like this. And share it, baby. Share it on Google or anywhere. Like Facebook, whatever. And uh, I appreciate it. Many thanks to all the subscribers. You guys are great, man. And uh, catch you on the next one. Cheers. And me and Earl's really good, but... Uh, Earl, don't do that, man. <laughs>